I was in school and Comfort came out with a project that they want young ladies to help them start their own businesses because they could see that in the long run some of us will graduate without jobs so I, I applied with a business idea using Moringa to make other products but by that time I didn't really know how to make soap cream nothing using Moringa so it was a business competition it was sponsored by MasterCard Foundation USA that was how Esther got into entrepreneurship. Her grandmother was into moringa processing where she extracted the seed oil and the leaves for medicinal purposes. I had other ideas like making a dawa dawa granite paste and all that. But the moringa like this, it's like our house home food when I was when we were growing up. Like our grandmother used to send us around to harvest the moringa leaf for us to cook the seed she would just bring the oil out of the the seed and when you have a wound she would give it to you and use it and apply and people used to come to the house to ask her for the oil and she used to give to them esther had to convince a team from comfort to buy into her moringa business idea she was empowered to start the moringa business from 100 pieces of Moringa soap in her small room to trading on the international market. When I started making the soap, I could make like 100 pieces in a day. Like within a week, it will be okay and we will, be, we will sell it. It was just on a small scale. I was making the soap in my veranda. We are having a single room where I was living there with my elder sister. A success, she says, was achieved through patience. Esther and her team can produce 3,000 pieces of Moringa soap every day. Her aim is to build a factory to be able to produce more of this soap for Africa and beyond. I have some partners in the African countries and they, they have U.S. markets. And I have some in Nigeria, Zambia, I have UK, I have some in the Arab country where the black soap went. So like if they like if the market is good for them, is the cover that has slowed certain things. Like the US like this. One of the customers is complaining that she brought the things, she can't even take it to the market, the shop, because the shops were all closed. Over 600 people have been trained under her leadership. So I think I've achieved a lot and I've trained like la over 600 people within last year when the COVID came. Within last year and now. And as I told you earlier, I'm mentoring people to start their own business. The fact that I'm not making the money alone. And I'm also sharing, I have my experience to grow other people. I think it's a great achievement I've gotten. Esther knows her time on earth is limited, so she doesn't want to waste it living someone else's life. She does not also want to be trapped by dogma, which is to live with the results of the thought of others. That is why Esther intends to establish a factory to produce in larger quantities in the northern part of the country. Very standard production factory. Like all the, the machines, I just want it to be standard and formal. I'm thinking in future, I'll make Moringa foods, like Moringa bread. I'll make drinks out of Moringa, like juice. Because most people take alcohol in the name of Moringa that is inside the alcohol. And the alcohol is very harmful to our health. I've done that for some people. They will tell me that I should do Moringa bitters. And uh, when you look at it, it's alco alcoholic, the production. So, and the main issue of them is to consume the Moringa. So I'm looking at it in the future, I will come out with a Moringa drink that at least it can serve that purpose of this bitters some people they will say go and take this one is good there's moringa in there 
if there is a non-alcoholic moringa juice or wine or something the person will go for that one but, but we have grapes wine like those ones no alcohol inside and people Esther are studied accountancy at the tamale polytechnic in 2011 she believes that creativity can solve unemployment in ghana Empowering women, according to Esther, is one of the smartest investments she wants to make. She says financial independence gives women choices and it allows them to spend more time on their families, drive growth in their economies and inspire others in their communities. A report by Mohamed Nuruddin.